soul my soul loves Jesus help me bless his name my soul loves Jesus my my soul my soul loves Jesus, my soul, my soul loves Jesus, help me bless, let's bless his name, now let the church say yes, we say yes. Yes, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness. We thank you for the multitudes of your tender mercies. We thank you for your outstretched hand. We thank you for the way of the cross. We thank you for despising the shame. Thank you, O oh God, for going all the way. It's because you died, O oh God, that we have life today. And we just want to tell you thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your love, O oh God. Thank you for your keeping power. Thank you for showing yourself strong on our behalf. Lord, we thank you for keeping our mind. Thank you for keeping us all day long. Lord, as we went about our daily activities, Lord, you were there every step of the way. And we just want to give you glory, honor, and the praise. For you are good, and your mercies endure forever. Lord, we appreciate you evermore. Lord, for you're better to us than we deserve. You're better to us, oh God, than we can ever be to ourselves. Lord, we thank you, oh God. And so we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your your courts with praise. Lord, we're thankful unto you, and we bless your holy name. Lord, for you are good. Lord, you're merciful. Lord, you're so kind, and we appreciate you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. We will lift up our eyes into the hills, from which cometh our help. Our help, our help, our help, all of our help coming from you, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Lord, we appreciate you, God. Lord, we're going to stand for you. Lord, we're going to go all the way, Lord, to see what the end is going to be. Lord, you didn't bring us this far to leave us, oh God. And we thank you, oh God. We're going to get into the press. Lord, it's evening time, huh, and you're soon to come, huh, and you're coming back for a church, huh, Lord, that is ready. Huh, Lord, you're coming back for a church, huh, Lord, that is doing. Huh, Lord, help us to put our hand to the plow huh, and not look back. Huh, help us to press toward the mark huh, for the prize of the high calling of God, huh, which is in Christ Jesus. Huh, yes, huh, yes. Huh, Lord, we're determined. Huh, Lord, Lord, we're determined. Lord, we're determined. Can't stop now. Lord, can't stop now. Come too far to turn around now. And we thank you right now. Lord, we're glad. Lord, we're glad. Lord, we're thankful. Lord, we have an attitude of gratitude. Yes. Give us a say yes to your God. Yes to your will. And yes to your will. Yes, we will obey. Yes. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, in our soul. Yes, all in our mind. Yes. Yes, all down in our spirit. Yes. Lord, we've come over here to stay until we die. We're on the battlefield fighting for you, oh God. And we made a promise, oh God, Lord, that we're going to serve you until we die. We're on the battlefield, and sometimes the battle gets hot, Lord, but we're going to stay right there. Lord, help us, oh God, because it's in wartime that our faith is truly tested. Lord, we want to be battle tested in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, oh God, Lord, that when it gets hot, Lord, that we don't run, but that we press in in the name of Jesus. As the world grows more and more wicked every single day, Lord, we want to take a stand. We want to proclaim your truth. Lord, so those that are walking in darkness might see the light. But you called us the light of the world. Lord, the city that's sitting up on the hill that cannot be hid. Lord, we're the salt of the the earth. Huh? Lord, help us today. Huh? Lord, the season. Huh? Lord, wherever we are, huh? in the name of Jesus. Huh? Lord, that salt huh? that you speak of in your word huh? is supposed to slow down huh? the decay of the world. Huh? Lord, help us to do our part. Huh? Lord, help us to take a stand. Huh? Lord, somebody huh? Lord needs to know. Huh? Lord, that you save. Huh? Somebody huh? Lord needs to know that you love them so. Lord, help us to be your mouthpiece. Help us, oh God, Lord, to take a stand and be the witness that you called us to be in these last and evil days. Yes, help us to be battle-tested in the name of Jesus. Going all the way, it doesn't matter what come. It doesn't matter what go. Lord, we're going to keep on pressing. We're going to forward march. Huh? Lord, we're going to move forward huh? in the name of Jesus. Huh? For you are our strength. Huh? Lord, you are our salvation. Huh? Lord, you are our light. Huh? Lord, you are everything. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? And tonight, oh God, huh? Lord, we give you our heart. Huh? We give you our mind. Huh? We give you our soul. Huh? Lord, we surrender. Huh? Take complete control. Huh? Lord, help us, oh God. Huh? Shine a light from heaven huh, on our soul. Huh? And if you be know, oh God, huh, there are some things, huh, Lord, that is in us huh, that's not like you. Huh? Lord, we ask that you take it out huh, and strengthen us. Huh? But we want to be right. We want to be right. Huh? Lord, we want to be saved. Huh? We want to be whole. Huh? We want to be complete in you. Huh? Lord, help us tonight. Huh? Lord, we lift up our hands to you, oh God. Huh? Lord, we, we thank you, oh God. Huh? And Lord, we ask, oh God, huh? tonight that you heal the sick huh? that is among us. Huh? Heal those that are in the sanctuary. Huh? Lord, that are dealing with ailments. Huh? Those that are streaming live. Huh? Let your will go up. Huh? Let your faith go up to God. Huh? Lord, we believe huh? that by your stripes, huh? Lord, we are healed. Huh? Lord, in exchange for your blessing, huh? in exchange for your healing, oh God. We're going to get into the fight. Lord, we're going to press in in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm reminded of that soldier who goes to the hospital after experiencing the traumatic experience on the battlefield. Lord, he's focused on trying to get back into the fight. Lord, help us to have that same mindset. Lord, to get back into the fight. Lord, whatever activity Huh? Lord, of our limbs that you give us, huh? help us to use what we have, huh? Lord, that we might, oh God, huh? Lord, win the battle, huh? in the name of Jesus, huh? yes, huh? Lord, we're your soldiers, huh? Lord, we belong to you, huh? Lord, we've been bought with the price, huh? Lord, brought by your mighty power, huh? Lord, we've been kept, oh God, huh? Lord, you've been keeping us huh? down through the years, huh? and we just want to tell you thank you 
We ask that you would touch our man of God. Lord, touch our leader. Bishop Patrick Lane Wooden Sr. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for the man of God, the angel of this house, the one that you placed over us. Lord, how he studies, how he, oh God, draws nearer to you, how he goes in to hear your voice so he can minister to the people of God. We thank you, oh God, for his intensity. We thank you, oh God, Lord, for his passion. Lord, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We ask that you would strengthen his body in the name of Jesus in every area, oh God. Lord, where he's weak. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would give him strength evermore in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for our first lady. Thank you for how you're touching her body. Lord, thank you for how you raised her up. Lord, we thank you, oh God, Lord, for her life. We thank you, oh God, Lord, for our service. We thank you for a commitment huh, to you, oh God. Huh. Lord, we thank you, huh. Lord, for the leaders of the house. Huh. We thank you for every servant of the house. Huh. We ask that you would continue to bless us, huh. Lord, as we avail ourselves to you, huh, as we delight ourselves in you. Huh. You said you give us the desires of our heart. Huh. Lord, we delight ourselves, huh. Lord, and we serve you huh, in spirit and in truth. Huh. Yes! Thank you, O oh God. Lord, we praise you, O oh God. Lord, we praise you, O oh God. We praise you on tonight. 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 Lord, we lift your name on high. We shall glory. We shall glory. Lord, for we have the victory. Lord, we are victorious. Lord, we have the victory in you. Yes, yes. Lord, we thank you, oh God, and we appreciate you, Lord, for the opportunity to be promoted and the opportunity to be persecuted. Lord, we thank you, oh God, Lord, for you are our keeper. Lord, you are our keeper. Lord, you are our keeper. For the Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Lord, you're able to keep us, oh God. You're able to hold us with the right hand of your right. Righteousness, huh? Lord, there are many in the house on tonight. Huh? There are many that are viewing on tonight. Huh? Lord, that are experiencing great persecution. Huh? That are experiencing great suffering. Huh? Lord, but I'm here. Huh? Lord, as we stand here to pray. Huh? Lord, we know in your word. Huh? We're saying the suffering of this present time. Huh? is not worthy to be compared. Huh? To the glory that shall be revealed in us. Huh? Lord, we got to take a stand. Huh? Lord, we got to keep on going forward huh, in the name of Jesus. Huh? And Lord, we pray for strength even now. Huh? Lord, strength to endure. Huh? For he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. Huh? So we ask that you regulate our mind. Huh? Lord, regulate our thoughts huh, in the name of Jesus. Huh. We want to bring every thought huh, unto the, every, to the obedience of Christ. Huh. Oh, glory to God. Huh. We want our eyes to be focused on you. Huh. We want our mind to be stayed on you. Huh. But whose mind is stayed on thee? Huh. Lord, you're keeping perfect peace huh, because we trust in thee. Huh. Lord, we're trusting in thee. Huh. Yes. Huh. Lord, we're trusting in thee. Huh. Yes. Lord, we're trusting in thee. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Lord, you did it before. And Lord, you're able, Lord, to do it again. Lord, you are able to meet every need. Lord, meet the needs of your people. Lord, as you promised in your word, we're depending on you. We're depending on you. Lord, we believe that you're going to see us through. So, Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Lord, bless us, O oh God, and strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen our hands, O oh God. Lord, strengthen our feet in the name of Jesus. Restore us, O oh God. Restore us and revive us and strengthen us. Lord, we ask, O oh God, we need more power. Lord, we need more power. Power 
power to stand, power to hold on, Lord, power to act right, power to do right, Lord, when the flesh rises, Lord, help us to not deny the flesh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us, oh God, help us, oh God, we can't afford to throw in the towel, Lord, help us today, in the name of Jesus. But many times, oh God, it's when the battle get hottest. Lord, it's when victory is on the other side. Lord, help us to keep on going in the name of Jesus. Help us to keep on going in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you on tonight. And we thank you for your presence that's in the room on tonight. And we clap our hands. We clap our hands. We clap our hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. If you would stand before the reading of God's holy word, it's taken from Psalms 26, and we'll read verses 1 through 4. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And the word is the Lord is blessed. Come on, let's clap our hands for Jesus and give God the praise. Now into the hands of our praise team. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God the praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy. Anybody got a praise for the Lord today? Hallelujah. How many know that the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way? Hallelujah. How many know he's kept you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're looking for a miracle, but right now, hallelujah, all you need is a memory. Hallelujah. Of how God has brought you through. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. out on the fiery clay. He placed my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. A song of his praises. Hallelujah. He brought me out on a fiery clay. He placed my feet on the rock to stay. A song of his praises. Come on, help me say, he brought me out. He brought me out on the mind. He placed my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. A song of his praises. Come on, he brought me out. He brought me out on the mind. He placed my feet. He placed my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul. Today, a song of his praise. Come on, put those hands together right here. How many know that the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way? I can pass the mic around. Hallelujah to those that know you've been delivered, you've been saved, you've been healed, you've been set free. Come on, city, he brought me out. He brought me out on the fire. He placed my feet. He placed my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song. He put a song oh. in my soul today. A 
song of his praise. Hallelujah. He brought me out. He brought me out on the mark. He placed my feet. He placed my feet on the rock. He put a song in my he soul. Put a song in my soul. Today, a song of his praise. A song of his praises, hallelujah. Put those hands together right here. Come on, clap your hands. How many know he brought you out? Glory to God. Listen. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Such a wonderful savior, I never know you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. You carry my burdens every day. You're such a wonderful savior, I never know you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Come on, say, Jesus. Jesus, you brought me all the way. You carry my burdens every day. Carry my burdens every day. You're such a wonderful Savior. Such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. Never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Come on. Jesus, you brought me. Jesus, you brought me all the way. You carry my burdens every day. my burdens every day. You're such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. He brought you. Hallelujah. It was not me. It was not my strength. But it was the strength of the Lord that carried us. Hallelujah. Come on, sing again. Jesus. Jesus, you brought me all the way. You carry my burdens. Carry my burdens every day. You're such a wonderful Savior. Heaven on you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Hey, Jesus, you brought me all. You brought me all You carry my burden. Carry my burdens every day. You're such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. You're such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. Such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. Jesus, Jesus, you brought me all the way. Come on, put those hands. Mighty long way. He brought me. 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 From a mighty long way. From a mighty long way. From a mighty long way. He brought me from a mighty long way. He brought me. 
man of God because they have so many witnesses. On Sunday, our bishop began to tell our elder Wilson's testimony, but I can pass around all over this church to know what God has been good to you. Hasn't he been good to you? I was in privilege to able to see Jesus walk on water. I didn't have the privilege to see Moses part the Red Sea, but I can only tell you, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I got a, t I got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. Anybody got a testimony? Thank God for this awesome praise team on tonight. Will you help me honor the God of the Bible on tonight? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have many testimonies. Will you help me celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I'm talking about Jesus on tonight. Facebook, YouTube, the Church of God in Christ. So if you see me clap my hands, if you see me shouting on the side, if you see me scream out glory, hallelujah, now you know one of the many reasons why the Lord has been good to me. And how many of you know I'm so grateful to God for a pastor, a leader. When I look back oftentimes and from time to time, I'll just say, thank you, leader. I'm grateful that I had a leader that had a mind to pray right then and there. How many of you know I needed a right then and right now prayer? I'm just grateful that we have a leader like that. And I'm here to tell you, lo these many years, this is a man of God that seeks the face of God on our behalf. This is a man that prays for each and every one of us. That's the type of leader we have here at the upper room. And you also know that he can flat out preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and teach his word line upon line, precept upon precept. And did you know we got a warrior and a leader, a fighter? He fights for the lives of the unborn. And boy, did he do it in Virginia, representing the God of the Bible. It was awesome to see as he opened up with a prayer and how it moved the people that were there under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And I watched people that want to gravitate to him simply because of the anointing and to hear what God has to say through him. I'm taking this time to share this because we are blessed here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ, to be, have the privilege of calling him our pastor. So would you put your hands together and receive this anointed man of God, our leader, Bishop Patrick Lane, Wooden Senior. Hallelujah. Let us give God praises tonight, for the Lord is good and worthy to be praised and worthy to be praised. Father, in Jesus' name, 
we just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another day, and thank you, Heavenly Father, for life, for health, and for strength. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy. And Father, we ask you tonight to let the words sink deep into our hearts. And God, we come and we give you, we bring to you uh, our thought life, our minds, our hearts, our will, our actions, in the name of Jesus. For you are our God. You're our peace. You're our song. You've also become our salvation. And we just love you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. So we ask you, O oh Father, tonight to, to allow your word to sink deep into our spirits. And God, heal the sick that's amongst us. Strengthen us where we're weak and build us where we're torn down. Our friends who are streaming, those who are convalescing, those who can't be here tonight, and we thank you for the wonderful response in the saints who are here. But God, we thank you for the saints who are there. And we pray that the glory of God and the blessings of the Lord enter your living room, your bedroom, your automobiles, that uh, plane and the train and wherever you may be watching, may the blessings of God be upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you give the God of the Bible praises? What a mighty God we serve. He's good to us, and he has caused his face to shine upon us, and you might be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so much uh, for your reverence and respect. I want to thank you, Elder Wilson, for that tremendous introduction, sir. Uh, we had a marvelous time together uh, on yesterday. Thank God tonight for Pastor James Parker, Superintendent Parker, uh, being with us tonight. Parker uh, is a traveler, and we most certainly do honor uh, in his absence tonight. My first assistant, Elder Amen Truku, he was with us yesterday. And then at the National Prayer Breakfast uh, today, and we'll be preaching up there uh, in D.C. this weekend. So we're just grateful. And we were all together, and we all scattered <laughs> on yesterday. And uh, at the, um, the March for Life in Virginia, it blessed me real good to see the happy warriors show up, several of the saints jumped on the van, and Brother Carl Reeve drove them up. And we were, I was just so delighted to see them. And God blessed us in the prayer breakfast um, that took place. And Elder Parker uh, rode up with me. And uh, we went to the prayer breakfast. And um, it was a, an amazing time. And got a chance to march and march with the governor. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a governor who would march for life? Good to see you tonight. Amen. But it, it would be something. But we... Who knows, one day God will may give us that. Amen. A governor in North Carolina, another one who will march to save the lives of unborn babies. But we had a tremendous time, and we're grateful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We certainly do honor our supervisor. She's uh, doing her uh, jurisdictional business tonight. And uh, to our district missionary, District Missionary Moles, we thank God for you. And I want to thank God for all of you who've been praying for my wife. She's doing well. And uh, she said, uh, thank you. Said, um, honey, what do you, you think I would be all right to come out tonight? I said, I would rather for you to wait until Sunday. It's, it's rainy. Uh, it's wet. She's recovering well. Um, and, you know, I have to, you have to say it, it's not COVID, you know. But anyway, uh, but um, I'm just grateful to God for her and for what the Lord is doing and to all of the saints. It's good to see you. And to our friends who are streaming tonight, thank God for every one of you. And um, we have uh, quite a few ground, a uh, uh, little bit of ground to cover tonight. So let's go to the word of the Lord. I want to call your attention to Matthew's gospel, chapter number 15, and when you get it, keep your finger on it, 
and uh, just hold it there, and then we're going to go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 22. Chapter 15, and we'll, we'll, we'll read from chapter 15 in just a moment, but I want to call your attention. Um, I referenced it today when we sent out our invitation to the service tonight, and I felt led of the Lord uh, to start with that, and then we'll go into uh, our text tonight. Is that all right? Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 22, and verse 34. Now, what's interesting, it says, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had uh, put the Sadducees to silence, that he had muzzled them. Um, and one of the reasons that caught the, the Pharisees' attention is because Jesus had muzzled them. In uh, verse 22 of chapter 22, and when they, the Pharisees and the Herodians, heard these words, they marveled and, and left him and went their way. He publicly shut them down. Then, uh, verse 23 says, the same day came to him the Sadducees. All right, and the Sadducees, they were much more political um, than the Pharisees were. And they were more political and they didn't believe in the resurrection and things like that. But when they, uh, they came and they, they tried their hat at um, silencing or stumping our Lord or trying to say something where they could catch him, try to catch him in something and where to, to cause him um, uh, to, to be wrong in his teachings or something. So after he had silenced the, Sad the Pharisees, then the Pharisees heard that he silenced the Sadducees. Verse 30 33 says, and when the multitude had heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. So Jesus knew what he was talking about. And it says, verse 34, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Um, and verse, and, and look at this. One other person decides to try. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, that is, a scribe, an expert of the law, he came. Uh, trying to question Jesus, hoping that he could say something that would tie our Lord up. And he came, the Bible says his intentions were not good. It's clear, it says came tempting him that he is trying to trap our Lord. And he said, Master, showing respect, which is the great commandment. Now, this man didn't care about the commandments. The text tells us that he was trying to tempt the Lord. So it was, it was not a legitimate question in the first place. It was a question that's designed to get Jesus to say something that they could try to uh, accuse him of. So he says, Master, which is the great commandment of the law? And um, the other day, a, a, a lady, a judge, who was being considered to serve was being questioned by a committee in Washington, D.C. And they asked her questions that a, a person who's being considered for that prestigious position uh, had been selected by the administration to serve, should have known. And uh, there were questions re regarding the law. And she said, no answer comes to mind. Then he asked her another question, and she was stumped. No answer comes to mind. So here he asks Jesus, which is the great commandment of the law? Now notice what he didn't ask him, because what comes to our mind uh, is the, the, the Decalogue, the ten, the ten Commandments. The question was not concerning the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. The question was concerning the commandments of the law, the whole law of Moses. So what he was questioning Jesus on is which of the 613 laws 
in the law of Moses is superior. Amen? Thank God for our young folk being fired up over there. I might, we might need to find out what they <laughs> So, so, um, so the, the question is, of the 613, and this, this drives home knowing what you know. Reading the Bible, studying the scriptures, knowing what you know. Because when you know what you know, then you don't have to be afraid when the enemy tries to come against you. You have to know what you know. And every preacher needs to know. Uh, preacher, missionary, all of us who represent Christ. So of the 16, 613 separate commandments that are in the law of Moses, which is the great commandment? Do you see that? The great. Jesus uh, did him a solid. I'll tell you the greatest two. The man asked for one. The great. Jesus says, no, there are two. And you can't have one without the other. They go together. You can't claim to exercise one. According to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20, without exercising the other. Because you certainly can't say that you love your, uh, you do not love your brother who you have not seen, claim to love God, but you don't love your brother. God who you have not seen, but hate your brother who you see. So these go hand in hand. So Jesus said, said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. This is, you see that? With all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is, even though you asked for the, the great commandment, he says, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to it, is similar to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. Jesus took the 613 which were uh, in, in the law of Moses and he condensed them down to two. It says everything hinges on you obeying these two. See, in biblical anthropology, the heart, the soul, and the mind, they all uh, overlap. They overlap. The point that he was making is, you got to love me with your whole person. God wants us to love him. His way of saying, love me with all thy soul, with all thy heart, and all thy mind, is love me with your whole person. How much do we love the Lord? Boy, it's bad to serve the Lord and not love the Lord. Church is hard when you attend the house of God, but you don't love the Lord. That's when it's a press. That's when it's a press. That's when it's, you know, it's just so difficult. It takes everything. You got to have a, a conversation with yourself before you can show up when you don't love the Lord. It's easy to miss church when you don't love the Lord. When you love God. And then apparently there are degrees of loving God. That's why it says love him with all thy heart. All thy soul. And all thy mind. My God. This is the first one. It starts with loving God. Amen. 
And what Jesus is doing here, he's quoting the Shema in Deuteronomy chapter number six. Sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. The great Shema is, this is considered to be the most powerful passage of scripture in the entire Old Testament. And that, that scripture is uh, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's the Shema. This is the foundation of Judaism, which is the foundation of biblical Christianity. The Lord our God is one Lord. Then he says to us, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Look at this. With all thine heart. That is, with all your consciousness. With all of your awareness. And with all thy soul. That is, with your body and mental capacity. And with all thy might. That is, with an intense passion. Amen. An intense passion that moves you. Do, you, do your soul still cry out hallelujah when you think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for you? See, when, it, when it's in you that way, that's loving God. Don't let your, your, your relationship with the Lord get stale. Amen. So you got to know how to attend church. But keep your relationship with God fresh. A lot of preachers, and missionaries, and ministers, they've lost their love for God. They're serving bishops, supervisors, you name it. They, we have singers, you name it. They're in the church. They don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't dip, and they don't chew. But they, they, they've lost that passion for God. Don't you lose that. No one and nothing is worth that. God says love me. But don't just love me. But love me with all. All. All, do you see that? All thy heart, all thy soul. He breathed into man's nostrils and man became a living soul. See, your energy, it ought, it, it ought to be hard for you to miss the things of God. When it's time to do for God, you ought to show up. God ought to have access to your soul. Man became a living soul, a living person. God ought to have access. Your, your limbs ought to belong to him. Praise God. When he needs a voice, he ought to be able to use yours. When he needs feet, he ought to be able to use yours. When he needs, when he needs a back, someone to get the job done, God ought to be able to call on you because you love him with all your soul. Amen. The Shema says, with all thy might, here our Lord says, with all thy mind, it's the same thing. With your, your thinking, your intelligence, your energy, with enthusiasm. Let's remain an enthused church. Amen. And then he said the second commandment is uh, similar to it. It says, like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor. Now he quotes from... Leviticus, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That is, you should love your neighbor, Leviticus 19 and 18, as a fellow human being. Amen. Aren't you human? Love your neighbor as yourself. And these two go hand in hand because you can't claim to love God and not love people. And who 
is your neighbor. Everybody. <laughs> Amen. You love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 18 of Leviticus chapter 19 says, Thou shalt not avenge. Believers have to resist the temptation to practice get, getting even. Get evenism is not supposed to be a part of our Christian walk. <clears throat> I'll get you back. No, you ain't supposed to do that. Mm -mm. Let it pass. Because if you're going to get them back, God's not going to get them back. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the, the children of thy people. Instead of getting vengeance, instead of bearing a grudge. Now notice uh, that all of this is the same verse. So he's clearly including people who are easy to love and people who are not. He's clearly including people who you can just love because they've been so nice to you and people who you want to take vengeance on. <laughs> Do you see that? See, you, you may have, and, and knowing you the way I know you, you, if you have a grudge against somebody because you're good and sanctified, you have just cause for that grudge. And God said, yeah, maybe they did everything that you're holding the grudge for. He says, but thou shalt not hold a grudge. Now, you know you got to love the Lord not to hold that grudge. <laughs> it takes Jesus. It takes loving God. Some things you let go of because you love God. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with the individual. Right. It's God. It's God. And, you, and you look at them and you say, yeah, I'm not going to let you come between me and God. Amen. Because if I hold that grudge or I try to avenge, then that act, now I'm disobeying God. God. And I may get you back. I may pay you for what you've done, what you did to me, all right? But now I'm in trouble with God. Because he told me that I'm supposed to love him with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. He told me to love him that much. Okay, Lord, I love you that much. All right, you, do you really love me like that? Yes, Lord, I really do. He says, okay, thou shalt not avenge. Because see, love is an action word. It's not, it's not an empty word. Love means something. Amen. He says, okay, if you love me, I want to tell you something. What? Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt, instead of bearing a grudge, instead of getting vent, taking vengeance, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On whose authority? <laughs> On God's authority, he says, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I'm the one you love with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. So you, do, you, do, you see, do you see the importance of surrendering our thought life to the Lord? God, I need to give you my mind. I need, you, you, I need to give you my heart and my soul so that I will respond correctly. So that I can handle things the right way. Because saints, things are coming. The devil knows how to put you on front street. You got to know how to operate on front street. You can't get ugly and Get mean and get vengeance and you know all that kind of stuff you got to know how to give it to God go on about your way and act like you don't even notice give it to God and operate in a spirit of love and just trust the one who you love amen now let's go to Matthew's gospel uh, well we're in Matthew let's go now to chapter number 15 it takes growth to to not bear that grudge, doesn't it? Oh, I got to go home and fast and pray. All of us do. Because, you know, 
Uh, see, what, what, the, what Christianity does, one of the challenges that people have with biblical Christianity is that it, it, the teachings of biblical Christianity goes against your natural human uh, nature, instincts, and inclinations. See, fallen man's natural instincts is to strike back. Fallen man's natural instincts are to hold a grudge. To render evil for evil. It takes loving God to not do that. Praise the Lord. You just love him so much that, that he begins to look at the situation through you. And you see it from his perspective. And all of a sudden someone that you would hate, you find yourself loving. Someone whom you would run over. You find yourself giving them a ride. We're talking about the thought life tonight. Jesus was uh, in the land of the Gesseret and Genesaret, excuse me, Genesaret, according to verse 34 of chapter 14. And when they had gone over and came into the land of Gennesaret, and when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem, the tassels, of his garment and as many as touched were made perfectly whole and this is about 90 miles from Jerusalem boom big time revival broke out people getting healed left and right touching the tassels of his garments and they're getting well I feel bad for the guy that didn't get to him. But a whole lot of people, not everybody got healed that day, everybody who touched. So, so we don't know how many people that, 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 that got healed, but we know a whole bunch of them did. And uh, it goes to show you ought to try to be the first one on the altar. I contend the last person who comes for prayer don't get the blessings that the early people come. You, especially if you're saved and you're sitting back there and you're sitting there, well, I don't know. I think I might just come on and get up and go get prayer. Oh, you, you don't want anything from the Lord. That's not how you get healed. That's not how you get healed. When you want something from the Lord, you got to approach God like you want it. The Bible teaches that we come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly, boldly. That's the way you did in the club before you got saved. Oh, am I right? Before most people, before they got saved, who we went to the club, and if the club was a real jumping club, then you had to get in line to get in the club. I ain't talking about some of you things where wasn't nobody there. You could just walk in. I'm talking about where you got to wait. Folk be outside the club dancing, waiting in line, looking forward to going in and having a good time. And sometimes we approach God like we're approaching somebody who doesn't love us. And who is not here to heal us and to bless us and to keep us. Right. Something to be said for how we approach him. So there's this big, big revival. People are getting healed left and right. Good things are going on. So with everybody getting healed, people touching the hem of his garment, the word got out. They sent the, the word out that Jesus was there and they just brought all these people with diseases of, a, of every kind and God's healing and delivering and setting free. Then came to Jesus, verse 1, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Uh, Matthew gives us some detail here. Uh, that is important because these scribes and Pharisees were from Jerusalem. Uh, they were uh, viewed as being very special because they come from the headquarters and they were much 
esteemed and they carried a lot of weight. Now they hadn't healed anybody. They hadn't delivered anybody like Jesus had. But they showed up from Jerusalem. And I can see the crowd now. <gasps> wow. Look at these people. Wow. The, 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 the chieftains have shown up. Look who came to the service. They walked in. All oh, these people here. Well, man said, my hand works now. Somebody else said, I can just all in my feet. So when I said, hey, mom, I can run. <laughs> just good things. Good. Blind eyes have come open. And here comes the religious leaders. In the midst of all of this. Now you would think that they would walk in with their hands up. Speaking in other tongues, saying we've never seen it like this. Glory! No, 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 no. That's not what was on their minds. What was on their minds, they had a question. They had a question. And I don't care what God was doing, it was not going to deter them. He ought to be able to deter you and me. If the enemy had you thinking about backsliding, you mean tell me you're going to come to church and be in a service and the Lord moved by his spirits and yokes get destroyed and people get blessed and you get up and leave that service and go backslide. You're the fool. You're not paying attention. He showed you enough to say, don't do that. Well, I, 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 I picked up a sick pack on the way to church. I'm going to drink it when I leave. That ought to tell you to take that thing and throw it away. Right. See, because the, the evidence, of the pre, evidence of the presence of God ought to influence yeah. your mind yeah. and your decisions. You ought not to be able to see God move. And I don't care how upset you were when you came. You mean to tell me you leave it and that's still, that, that issue that you had is still the main thing you're talking about. And, and you don't say anything about the service. Now you want to you uh, uh, rub me the wrong way. Let us talk at the service. And you ain't got nothing to say about what God just did. Because that's, that's the first thing I'm going to notice. Because what I'm waiting to hear is, man, the Lord just moved by his spirit. Thank God for what the Lord have done. And, and I'm listening for it to be real. Because you, you ought to talk about it. He just healed somebody. He just saved somebody. He just blessed someone. The word of God just went forth. And you mean to tell me as soon as the service is over, you're able to just be as carnal and act as though nothing happened? And there is nothing worth talking about? When people have a complaint. Some, they can complain for paragraphs. But when they have a word of of uh, affirmation, it's two words. Man, you preach. That's it. But now if there's something wrong, you got to hear it for the next six weeks. That ought not to be. The goodness of God ought to move you. The evidence of the Lord ought to move you. Said, Lord, I came and I was depressed and I was down. But what I saw, my God, even if you didn't get healed, if you saw God heal Sister Jacob, Sister Jacob, Sister Sarah, now you know if God healed you and I'm in the same room, it's got to be just a matter of time. Praise the Lord. I saw him heal her. There's got to be a matter of time before God is going to do something for me. So maybe if I just talk about what he did in her or if I just talk about the word of God that I just heard, it will move me. Sister, it's a pharisaical spirit that causes you to dismiss or fail to see or have nothing to say about the move of God. Right. Right. Man, when me and the riders get together, why are we getting ready to ride? All we talk about is the service. What happened Sunday? And the word of God. The riders can quote, can quote my preaching back to me. Uh, and sometimes I say to myself, did I say all that? Because we pay attention to the word of the Lord. Some have nothing to say about the word of God. Nothing. What do you talk about when you get home? Do you mention the service? 
Or is it dead? The moment we dismiss and you get to the door, you have nothing else to say. You ought to tell of his goodness. Talk about it. These leaders show up. Jesus has healed everybody that touched his tassel. Everybody's gotten healed. People are just, whoo, still screaming and hollering. You know how you would respond if you got healed, don't you? Yes, that's right. Amen. And these, I'm spending too much time on this. No, I'm spending too much time on it, but I don't get, he, he, I, I don't got stuck on it. These Pharisees and scribes show up with a, a question. And look at the question. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. I mean, I, just, I feel like going somewhere and sit down. I mean, this, this is bad. This, this is bad. That's your question. That's your concern. All of these healed people. All that God did. Uh, and you, you just going to walk into service and you, you have something you don't even have a question about the word of God. Nothing. Because that question was not a question concerning the Torah right. or the Pentateuch. It was a question concerning what went on to become what is called the Mishnah. Right. Which is the oral traditions, the commentaries that Rabbis made on the word of God. It was not the word of God itself. It was their commentaries. The Mishnah. Also called the oral tradition. This is why they didn't say, why do your men transgress the tradition? And this is where, where some of the, quote, non-traditional churches miss it. Well, we're not traditional they don't know that the word tradition here is not to be juxtaposed against denomination. The traditions that they were talking about were man-made ordinances based on what was written. The Mishnah. So they wanted to know, and, and it wasn't even a hygiene question. Now, you know, if, if, if they would have had COVID, you know, back then, they might have had a point, you know. Man, you didn't wash your hands, you know. <laughs> or if they're uh, in the bathroom or something, you want, you want. The hygiene, this was not a question of hygiene. This was a question of ceremonial washings, right. where you had to go through certain ceremonies where people could tell uh, it's for display that you had washed your hands. And so um, they wanted to know why they noticed Jesus. They noticed that Jesus' disciples didn't do it. They saw him one day going through a field picking corn. The guy just picked the corn and ate it. They were hungry. Well, you need to wash your hands. Ceremonial. So Jesus here, and I'm taking too long. Jesus does not... Well, he answers that question, but verse 3, his response is more a counterattack uh, than a response. Because he made a fundamental distinction uh, between the authority of God's word and what they were talking about. They wanted to know, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders, which is not the Old Testament doctrine, which is not the law of Moses. It's man-made commentary on the law of Moses. He said, but you answer me. 
And he says, uh, but he answered and said to them, now watch this. He says, answer me this. Why do you also transgress not the tradition of the elders? We're not going to start down there. We're not going to start down there with the tradition of the elders. We're going to start up here at the top, the commandment of God. I'm not going to go all the way down to the tradition of the elders. Who cares about that? I want to know, why do you transgress the commandment of God? Which is the most powerful? The traditions of the elders or the word of God? I thank God for the great doctrine of the church of God in Christ. I thank God for our black book. I thank God for our constitution. But nothing takes the place of the Bible. Nothing takes the place of the word of God. The organization is, is in good standing as long as it line up with the word of God. They move from the word of God, you have to move from it. Amen. So he says here, why do you transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? You want to know why are my disciples uh, transgressing or why... Uh, do my disciples fail to obey your traditions? I want to know why have you put traditions in place that transgress the commandment of God? And then he says, I'm going to give you an example. Since you gave me one, you talked about my disciples eating without washing their hands. Let me give you one. He says, for God commanded, and God did, Exodus chapter 20, God commanded, uh, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. The first of the Ten Commandments with promise. Because it says, so shall thou live long in the land. And, and God will extend your days for treating your parents right. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. He said, now this is what the commandment says. Are you following me? Uh, Exodus chapter 20. Let's look at it right quick. The word of God is something in it. The most fascinating thing in existence. Exodus uh, chapter 20 and verse 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Chapter 21 and verse 17. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. To curse here means to despise. Amen. To, be, to view your parents as being insignificant cursive to make light of your parents I'm going to teach you something tonight to belittle your parents to belittle your parents will get you in trouble with God that's cursing them to make light of them to treat them as though they are insignificant. And the thing about the text is, <clears throat> this is why you got to love God. It, it, it doesn't say, honor thy good father or thy good mother. Just father and mother. This is why you got to love God. See, it's coming home now, right? That's why you have to love God. Because sometimes you may have legitimate reasons for despising father or mother. Sometimes they suffered you to be abused. Sometimes they did things that were harmful. And if you have good parents, I talked to my mother on the way to church tonight. It's just a blessing to hear her answer the phone. But not everybody's blessed to hear their mother answer the phone. Some folk uh, are hoping that they would call and the phone don't, she don't answer. Say, thank you, Jesus. 
Called a funeral home. To, the wicked witch is dead. Oh, some, some of that wicked. But as a believer, that's why you have to ask God. See, God's, get, God's got to give you power. See, we, we're accustomed to loving folk who are easy to love. Now I'm going back to don't hold a grudge. See, it all connects. He that despiseth, here it is again, to be insignificant, to speak, treat your parents uh, like they're insignificant, to make light of them, to belittle them, the text says, shall surely be put to death. So Jesus here is talking to them and he quotes these two passages of scripture and he quotes them as one. For the commandment of the Lord says, uh, for God commanded, saying, honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die to death. But you have, in the Mishnah, in your comments, to God's word, you have altered it. Just as people are trying to alter, they're coming up now, coming out now with new Bibles. Bibles that justify sin. Bibles with mixed pronouns. He, she, they, it. Oh, the devil is the devil. Amen. The Bible is right. So here, here, here they are. See, th this changing of God's truth is not a new thing. So here they are getting ready to, in, 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 in the oral traditions, they have made a... Uh, Traditions, they have taken the writings of men and put them on equal par with the word of God. And let me tell you something, there are, there are no writings of any man, any man that is on an equal par with the word of God. I don't care if it's something God told you to write, it ain't on equal par with the Bible. Because, number one, because we're closed canon scripture, uh, preachers, we believe the canon is closed. Closed. From Genesis to Revelation, closed. Now, I'm not saying the Lord won't speak to you, but don't you think, don't even begin to think that I'm going to take what you said the Lord told you and put that on the same level of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't do that. Well, that's what they did here. So they came up with a way to get around God's word. And they were practicing it like, the, like there was nothing wrong. The text says, Jesus said, here's what you say. Y'all ought to underline that. Those of you who write in your Bible, underline, highlight, but ye say. So that's very important. But ye say, and compare that, but ye say, and go up to verse 4 and highlight, for God commanded. Now you put them two together, preachers, that, you can preach that. Yes, sir. God commanded this, but you say. Right. And then, then you ask the people, who you going to believe? Yeah. That would preach all day and all night. That's, that's good uh, uh, shut in preaching. We just investigate it and let it just simmer in your spirit. For God commanded, verse 4, but ye say, first clause of verse 5, you say, this is in the oral tradition, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, are you looking at it? It is a gift. Other passages, Mark says that they declare it Corbin, which literally, literally means it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Now, what does this mean? Let me explain. Because this is going to help you learn what honor means. What honor means. How you honor 
your father and your mother. This is a biblical definition of honoring them. When God says, <clears throat> the oral tradition, let me deal with what they said. Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift. Now, let me, let me explain. Mark um, 7 and 11 uses the word Corban, C-O-R-B-A-N. The tradition was that, that they put in place allowed the children to say to their parents if their parents needed financial assistance from them. And the kids had the money. That was a way for them to get around helping mama and daddy by saying this money, and this was not tithe, this was not offerings. The tithe is holy to the Lord and dedicated to God. This wasn't that. Say that this money is Corbin. That is, I have this money and it's dedicated to the temple. So therefore, I can't give you a dime of this. You can't be profited by me at all. Because this money is Corbin. It's set aside for God. Now the Bible tells us what to set aside for God. Tithe. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Uh, we're to bring the Lord an offering. But you shouldn't live your life, and if you do, shame on you, where after you pay your tithe and your offering, you ain't got nothing left. Why are you in that shape? Y'all not saying amen now. You, you, you can't, you, see, the bill, well, I got bills. The bills we have, we create. Satan don't create your bills. You create those bills. The bills we have, we create by our lifestyles. I'm not getting any amens tonight. By what we want. By what we want to do. Amen. I said the other day that some people can't, well, can't, can't help finance their children's college because the college money is in the garage. Shining. Got all the latest gadgets. Christian education. I've seen some things. You know, we ran a school for 18 years. And some schools, Matt, sir? Yes, sir, thank you. But in some schools, you go visit them, you think them people at that school have so much money. That's why they can put their kid in that fancy Christian school. But it's not that they have that much money. You can tell by what they drive. They will drive a smaller car. They will keep a car longer. You see them get out the car, they don't have on anything designer. In this day and time, the jeans are still baggy. What does that tell you? That's the 80s, but they still wear it. Because they have judged their child's education of far more value, of greater value than the latest trend. They don't go out to eat every other night. Cook the food. Much cheaper if you cook it at home. They live, but uh, the television is old. And they don't have a premium cable package. On the other hand, I've seen, I've seen some things. So I've seen people drive up in a Mercedes and need to have a meeting about uh, how far they are in the rears in their child's education. 
and need a cut driving a Benz. Now, I would be ashamed. Now, oh, you can say what you want to online. I would be ashamed to drive up in a Benz but need a cut. That means your priority, first of all, you need another car. Take that car back. That car is a status symbol. That car says you can pay the tuition. Now, if you got the car and can't pay the tuition, you have the wrong car. If you got to have a meeting. Oh, I'm, see, you ain't going to hear this anywhere. If you got to have a meeting about the tuition, you're driving the wrong car. And please don't walk in there with no designer bag. Don't do it. Hey, <laughs> Here you come. Oh. Louis. Prada. Gucci. Ah, Fendi. All of them. Yes, it's just sit there and... Uh, Nails, 30 different colors. I mean, I mean, if you want to wear the colors, that's all right. I don't care how many colors you wear. But you ought, if you can afford all that, then how can you not afford the education of your child? Or how, can, how do you need help taking care of your parents? Because if you got all that, Got all that going for you. That means you can afford to honor them. Give me a big hand. That's what Jesus was saying here. I'm headed somewhere. I, th I thought you were talking about the mind. I am. I'm trying to get to it. Do you see that? He said, now you all. Gave people a out that I didn't give them. Children are supposed to at some point arrange their affairs where they can help their parents. They helped us. There was a time in my life where one day's neglect from my mother, I would have died. Yes, sir. And it's true with all of us. All of us. Fragile huh? newborns. Am I saying anything? Yes, Fragile. They were, they were there. And uh, sometimes they had to do all kinds of things, work several jobs. To make ends meet. Right. Knees aching on that hardwood floor. Yeah. Scrubbing that floor. Though. Ain't above scrubbing the floor. You know, we're above certain things. We're above certain things now. You know, but I, I'm above that job. I th the only job you ought to be above is begging. Right. That's but that's what the man said in the Bible in Luke 16. He said, to beg, I am ashamed. We're living a day now where begging is, you know, it's, it's in. Just stand up there. Just, just pick, pick. Pick an intersection. Just pick one. Folk can't, folk can't even stop at the stoplight no more. You, you can't. You, oh, God. You, you can't. You hate for the red light to stop you. Because people, I know, I know, I know y'all don't like what I'm saying, but I'm right. Jesus said that you are supposed to honor. Now you find out what honor means. Honor means you got to inconvenience yourself for them. Mom, daughter, son, what? Dad, what? They did it for you. And, and you know what? God knows at times it's not easy. That's why it's honor. It's not honor if it's just easy. I admire several of the members who have talked to me about things that they've done to sacrifice to help their aging parents. God remembers that. Amen. God remembers that. Yes, Those are the kind of things that God remembers. 
That'll get you healed faster than asking for it. Healing. That'll get you delivered. That'll call favor to come your way. Oh, yeah. And one thing about it now, the parents don't make it easy. Because one thing they ain't going to forget. I don't care if, if you are 80. If your parent is 100, I'm your mama. I'm your daddy. My, my mama told me one day that my brothers told her, we're going to tell Pat on you. She said, Pat ain't none of my daddy. I'm Pat's mama. I said, amen, mother. <laughs> amen. 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 That's true. It's the way that is. And you know what? I'm not going to look at her and say, Corbin. You, you, can't, you can't be profited by this for me. Corbin. No. If I got something set aside that I want to do for God, you know what that means? Okay, now let me find out what else I need to cut. Because I got to do this for my mom. See, what's not a consideration is not getting it done for my mother. It's never an empty question when I ask mama, do you need anything? I'm not just talking. Right. Well, well, don't you have to live your own life too? That's part of living my own life. And let me tell you something. Children learn by watching. And if you ain't got time for your parents, you better not get old. Oh, you better not get old. Because when you get old, they're going to do you the same way. Right. Well, I'm your mama. Yeah, well, she was yours. It was all right then. Old time religion, good enough for mother. Good enough for me. <laughs> Y'all don't like my preaching tonight? Oh, my, I know what you're saying. I, if I would have known you were going to talk about this, I would have stayed home so I could watch you online. I could cut you off. Now you can't get up and just walk out right now because you, you look like a Corbin. I'm going to point at you. There goes Corbin. I want to thank God for Sister uh, Devana Stewart and her husband, brother, no, Sister Smith. And her husband, Brother Smith, um, her, her dad went home to be with the Lord. Tremendous man. This week. And one of the things that are getting them through is that they never said Corbin. That's right. Amen. See? Amen. Corbin people can get through because they did right. The person you find trying to get in the casket with the deceased. Corbin, you didn't do her right while she lived. Now you put on this big display. Just know, though, if you had a funeral here and you try to get in the casket, I am going to let you. <laughs> and once you jump in, I'm closing it. Tell the mortician to lock this thing because you're putting on a show. Right. Everybody knows. Uh, you like the man, two men, one, you know, one, one, uh, one is scared to fight and the other glad of it. <laughs> and both of them just, <laughs> ain't nobody throwing a punch or nothing. It don't take all day to fight. If you're going to fight, fight. <laughs> mm -mm. And they're saying to themselves, somebody stop me. <laughs> That's what that is because you didn't do them right. And they, and, and look at man. Man came up with a way to get around God. And they came up with a religious way to get around the word of God. And then they believed that religious way to disobey God 
to the degree that they came and questioned Jesus on it and didn't even notice all them healed people and want to know why do your disciples uh, transgress the tradition of the elders? Jesus said, why do you transgress the commandment of God? And he gave an example. And he called them hypocrites. Look at this. You hypocrites. Are you following me? Well did Isaiah prophesy of you. Saying this people. Draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. And they worship me. They worship me now. But he says, in vain do they worship me. Their worship is vain. Because they're teaching the wrong stuff. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Go to Isaiah chapter 29. Let's look at this for a moment. Time may run out on me today. I don't, tonight, I don't know. Isaiah 29, <clears throat> and, and, and it's a powerful, powerful chapter. It's just, just filled with stuff. I was reading some things today. I said, Lord, if I try to read uh, verse 1 through, uh, 20, uh, through 14 um, or through um, 11, um, I'm going to end up preaching. So keep from doing that. Verse 20, chapter 29. Um, he says in verse 9 in Isaiah, are you with me? Yes. Chapter 29. I'm going to read 9 through, down to 13 um, if it's the Lord's will. Well, yeah. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. They don't see. The vision of all is become unto you as the word of a book that is sealed. You can't get it. Saying, look at this. Which, which men deliver to one that is learned, that is a literate person. Your vision have become like the vision of someone who's reading a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is literate, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot read it, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. That is, I can't read it because I can't read. The educated can't read it because it's sealed. God says that's what you've become. You become people who can't understand my truth. I added a spirit of depth. I'm, I, I blinded you. See, when, listen, you better praise God when God opens up the heavens and let you read the Bible. And the Bible is taught to you where you can understand. Not everybody can see it. Not everybody gets it. He says this. He says... Wherefore, the Lord says, look at this, for as much as this people, 
Here's why God did it. Draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And, their, and with their lips do honor me. Uh-oh. But have removed their heart far from me. And their fear, their reverence toward me is not real. It's taught by, by the precepts of men. Do you see that? This is what he was quoting when he said to them, Isaiah told the truth about you. You honor me with your mouth. Yes, but your heart is far from me. And what you're teaching is in vain. I'm watching the clock. And he called the multitude. Look at what Jesus did. He called the crowd together. Listen up. Listen up. This is the same crowd he'd healed most of them. So you know they're going to listen. Man standing there, he could stand up and before, before he touched Jesus' tassels, he couldn't stand up. What, 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 what you got to say, Lord? Because the, these, these, uh, this scribe and these Pharisees, they've never healed anybody. Jesus says, listen up. I have something to tell you. Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but that which come out of the mouth this defileth a man see when they asked them about his disciples eating with unwashed hands they asked them this in front of the crowd so Jesus said well, I'm, I'm going to answer you but I'm going to answer you the way I answer I'm going to answer you you know like uh, like wooden does take all day to get to the point <laughs> but he's covering his bases. He's headed somewhere. Praise the Lord. He's headed somewhere. He's covering bases. He said, it's not that which goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out. Then, now look at this, then came his disciples. Because when Jesus said it, he let it, he said what he had to say and he let it go. I'm done. So now the crowd has dissipated. Now he's with his disciples only. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Do you not know that you made the Pharisees from Jerusalem, from Jerusalem angry? You offended them? His, answers, his answer was a powerful one. He said to his disciples, he answered them and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be uprooted. That is, they're not even a part of what God is doing. Don't worry about them. Don't even worry about them. See, you can't worry about everybody. See, you got to know as a saint when not to even uh, hit down. Some things ain't worthy of a response. Right. Not every plan that my heavenly father. So every plan that my heavenly father have planted shall be, or have not planted, shall be uprooted. And ain't that something? Shall be rooted up. It's going to be pulled up. Right. And then he said, as far as them being upset, he said, leave them alone. Sweet loving Jesus. Leave them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Don't worry about them. They're offended. Who cares? God didn't plant them anyway. Had they been planted of God, they would have been excited about all this healing that just took place. Had they been planted of God, they, wouldn't, they would have dropped their questions. And they would have never participated in uh, another book being put on an equal par with the word of God. So don't worry about them. But should we go win them? If you can find 
uh, win them or try to convince them or try to change their minds and leave them alone, then go ahead. I can't find that and leave them alone. What I find and leave them alone is leave them alone. Let it go. Let them go. Let them be offended. And he said, leave them alone because they're blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both are going to fall into the ditch. Then Peter, then answered Peter and said unto him, Lord, declare unto us this uh, parable. And uh, Jesus said, are you yet without understanding? Number one, I didn't make a parable. He's making a point. And, you know, I guess you could try to squeeze a parable out of it, the blind lead the blind, but a parable is a story. His question here was an example. He said, do you not understand that whatsoever entereth, he's still dealing with the question of verse 2, whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the trough. That is what you eat. You know how the human body works and you go to a private place and you relieve yourself. He said but those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come from the heart. Much of what they said in the Mishnah came from the heart because it contradicted the word of God. See, that's why you have to be careful what you add to your religion. Don't get me started. You have to be careful what we bring into the church. Who we pledge to and all that. All that. See. That's the word of God. If you can't find it in the word of God, we ought not to, we ought not to find it in the convention. Amen. If you can't find it in the Bible, you ought not to be able to find it. Not in worship. Y'all not praying, you're not saying amen. I'm through, I'm watching. Amen, I'm going home. I want you all to know we have a wonderful turnout tonight. Amen. Upper room, they're so wonderful, but even the wonderful members of the upper room of being a little stingy with the amens tonight. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm enjoying you all. You're all wonderful. You know I know that. Uh, he said, now look at this. For out of the heart, that's where I wanted to get, out of my heart, proceed, look at this. First thing, evil thought. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be delightful, be acceptable, be pleasing in thy sight. Look what, he, look what he starts with. Evil thoughts. We've got to give God our thought life. That's the, tonight, that's what I'm teaching about. That's the title, the thought life. <laughs> Out of the heart. Proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries. You see that? Come from the heart. Fornication. That's any illicit sexual activity which includes um, pedophilia. Homosexuality, lesbianism, and the like. Adultery, fornication, and the reason I explain this word fornication right here, there are people who try to say, well, the Bible never speaks against homosexuality in the New Testament. Yes, it does. It's in this word pornea, any illicit sexual behavior. Right here in the Bible. In the Bible, in the Bible, 
Oh, it's in the Bible. Oh, in the Bible. Look at this. Thefts, lying, false witnesses, blasphemies, slander. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands. Now he's attacking external religion only. Defileth not a man. Let me show you something. With the little time I have left. Genesis chapter number 6. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Then we're going. I'm going to. Uh. uh Call it a night. You know, I got to go to, what's High Point? Greensboro? Greensboro tomorrow night. Look at this. Look at this. Genesis chapter number six. And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth that the sons of God saw the, da the daughters of men that they were fair. They noticed that women were beautiful. They were right. And they took them wives of all they chose. This was an unsanctified union. The sons of God here is a reference. It's a reference. These wasn't just men of God. These were angelic beings. An unsanctified union. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. That is, I'm not going to always argue with you about this. Strive. I'm not going to always contend with you. For that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120. I will give man another 120 years to repent, but you're being evil. And from this unsanct these unsanctified unions, the book of Genesis is something. Amen. You can get in trouble preaching from Genesis. Right. It says there were giants in the earth in those days. These evil giants. These men, not only were they Giants in terms of uh, size, but what the text con is, is conveying, these men were bullies. These men were uh, larger than life, highly impressionable, famous yet evil. Amen. They were a subspecies uh, who were bullies and tyrants and uh, they made life here. Horrible. Giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of uh, men, and they bare children of them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. They were heroes. They were men of of renown. Now look at this. Here's what I want to get to. I don't want to get lost in the weeds. My time's up. He says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Continually. I want you to, if you write in your Bibles, highlight um, every imagination. That is, every plan, everything that they set out to do, the, every imagination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil. You see, we are what we think. 
Let that sink in. We are what we think. Our thought life is the foundation, saints, of our conduct. That's why you got to let God clean your thoughts. The thought life is the foundation of your conduct. But things stay on your mind long enough, you'll act on it. devil can try to sow a thought in your mind. You can't just let it stay there. You ought to rape somebody. Loose here, Satan. That's the way you do that. You kill that right away. You ought to leave the church. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You ought to go back to drugs. You're a liar, Satan. You, see, you don't, you don't let that stay in your head. But we ought to divorce. The devil is a liar. Not going to entertain that. As soon as he come upon you and try to tell you you're sick, don't just grab that. Right. Some people are hypochondriacs. Right. There ain't a thing wrong with you. Right. But you make yourself sick. You got to fight that. Right. Rebuke it fast. Right. You can't let them thoughts just resonate in your mind. You will lose your mind. Right. Don't give the devil territory in your mind. Some of us have allowed evil thoughts to go unopposed. Unopposed. And you, 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 you daydream evil thoughts. One of these days I'm going to preach to you a message. Uh, it's all in your dreams. Amen. But God said, you dream. They said it's going to be like a dream. They dreamed that they defeated you. It just says you're going to be like the man who dreamed that he had food, but when he woke up, he was still hungry. And then he dreamed that he had water, but when he woke up, he was still thirsty. God says, so shall it be with every nation that think they're going to destroy Zion. It's all in your dreams. That's what you ought to tell the devil. It's in your dream. That's in the Bible. You don't let him just keep those things in your head. The thought life, the thought life is the foundation. It is the beginning of our conduct. Corrupt thoughts corrupts eventually everything. So that's what defiles a man. And that's what God is asking for tonight. Our friends who are streaming, saints here in the sanctuary, would you bow your heads? Dear Lord Jesus, we come against thoughts. We come against every high thing and every imagination that exalteth itself against the word of God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord we just bring you our minds tonight we prayed a similar prayer this past Sunday but we said then it's not one prayer but we must continue to pray we're not going to give you this territory Satan you can forget it and in some cases, you've had it long enough. Not a day longer. Not a moment longer. In the name of Jesus. We serve a God who can cast down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. God, we're bringing it into captivity. God, bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. Where we will be obedient to Jesus. Touch us now. 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 Our friends who are streaming, God touch me now. Sanctify my mind. Sanctify my mind. Sanctify my thoughts. Oh God. Oh God. If what proceeds from the heart is what defiles a man, then God let that which proceeds from our heart be holy. Help us to love you, Lord. It starts with loving you. 
Loving you enough to want our minds to be cleansed. Loving you enough. Just loving you. Loving you, Lord. Loving you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The hand of God is against you. And Father, for every preacher, every leader, everyone who is watching tonight, that babe in Christ, that individual who just given their life to you, that person whose mind is cluttered, oh, Satan speaking to your mind. He's speaking to your mind. As a matter of fact, in your mind, he's talking to you against everything that was said tonight. Uh, he don't want you to re receive God's truth, but receive it. And give God your thought life. In the name of Jesus. You can't keep an evil thought from entering, but you can keep it from building a nest. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest. Hallelujah. 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 You ought to declare tonight your mind off limits. Sacred ground. Sacred ground. We give, we give God our insecurities. We give the Lord our fears. Some of you have been controlled by fear tonight. Give God your fears. Your fear of failure. Fear that your spouse is going to leave you. Fear, fear, fear that death is coming. Fear. Fear has torment. We rebuke it now. We rebuke it now. In the name of Jesus. And now, God, we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise. We give it to you tonight. For you're our God. You're our peace. You're our song. You've also become our salvation. You're a mighty God. And we give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give the Lord praises tonight? Would you give the Lord praises? For his word is Uh, come on, let's thank the Lord for such a powerful, rich word on tonight. Come on, let's honor the God of the Bible. The Lord had you and me in mind as our leader prepared and then so powerfully delivered the word on tonight. I'm grateful to God to be here. How about that powerful word, the thought life on tonight? Were you blessed on tonight? How many of you know that Bishop Wooden gave so many powerful nuggets and thoughts for us to feast on all week long? We are what we think. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare on tonight. The Philippians have made preparation. This is a designated group of individuals that made a commitment to support this mighty man of God in the work of the Lord. How many of you know that the goodness and evidence of the Lord should move you? Did we not hear anything tonight that would move us in understanding that we that are taught in the word should communicate with them that teacheth unto righteousness? This man of God walked in the word on tonight. Bishop posed it and I coined it a little differently, but he asked, and I want to ask you this, does the service continue in our lives after the God first? Does the message that he taught continue after the God first? As a believer, we must love those that aren't easy to love. When he was preaching all night long, I was saying, ooch, ow. Yes, help me, Lord Jesus. Don't act like I'm the only one in here. Y'all better say something in here on the night. I know the leader's over there, but y'all better act like you know. And all we can do is ask God to help us, amen? We're talking about the sifting process of a thought life. And then he said, there are no writings by man, hallelujah on equal par with the word of God. How many of y'all are excited there's no other word that has been written 
that is on equal par with the word of God. So tonight we're going to honor this powerful man of God. Many have made preparation to sow into the life of our leader. Me being one, Elder Amanchuku. Elder Amanchuku is giving $100 on tonight. I'm giving $100 on tonight. As always, Superintendent Parker giving one twenty-five on tonight. Let's thank God for Superintendent Parker. <laughs> Superintendent Cooper, one twenty-five on tonight. Our very own Chairman Morgan, $100. The Elder Ron Peebles, $100. The Elder Robert Williams, $75. The one and only Elder Clarence Rayford, $75. Patricia, Evan Patricia Lester, $60 and Brother Ron Moore, $50. I present these names and amounts before you to encourage. If you have not decided to be a Philippian, I want you to know, make the decision, whatever the amount may be, to be committed to sow into the life of this man of God. I'm here to tell you I've been blessed over and over again as a result of being associated with the Philippians. Are you ready to give on tonight? Have you made preparation? Are you excited about giving on tonight? It's a mindset. I want us to have a mindset to be excited about giving. Those of you that may be viewing online, Facebook, YouTube, you say, I love this type of teaching where the information on the ways to give are on the screen. Please take and consider, pray about sowing into the ministry. If we're ready, we're going to raise our right hands. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. God, as we have made preparation to sow into this man of God, this commitment, we realize it is an honor to serve and to sow. God, help us. Bless those that are here. Some have up things before you. God, move on their behalf. Move situations out of the way. Destroy the chains and fetters of the enemy. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please follow the directions of our ushers. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. Elder Rayford, you know what? It's a good life. It's a sweet life. I love living, living this kind of life. Is there anyone in here that says it's a good life? It's a sweet life. And I love living this kind of life. It's a thought life. We have to be intentional, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I love. How many of you are glad to be saved on tonight? You realize it's a good life to be saved in a day like today. Has everyone had the opportunity to give? Check your pockets. Did anyone give an offering? And you may have forgot about it. We're going to make time. Hallelujah. Amen. Kind Father, once again we come before you and we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for what you've already done and what you're going to do. God, we realize that we need you and for that we say thank you. Now God, anoint us with the mind to be towards you, oh God. A thought life. Help us to focus and think about you. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. At this time, the evangelist Patricia Lester is coming. Please receive her. Come on, show us some love.
Wives are asked to complete an anonymous survey which has been sent via constant contact. Hard copies of the survey are also available in the lobby and can be returned to the box on the table. Your prompt responses are greatly appreciated. Bishop Wooden will be the closing speaker for the Triad District meeting host, hosted by Superintendent James Therrington on Friday, February 3rd at 7.30 p.m. The service will be held at Tree of Life Church of God in Christ, located at 9B Dundas Circle in Greensboro, North Carolina. All those who can and will are invited to attend. The attire is black suits, white shirts, and red ties for men and black dresses for women. Join us as we partake in the communion and feet washing ordinances on Sunday evening, February 5th at 6 p.m. Elders and missionaries are asked to adorn in the appropriate attire. Sister Devonna Smith lost her father, Mr. Devin L. Stewart, on Tuesday, January 31st. The funeral arrangements are as follows. There will be a visitation on Friday, February 10th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Allen Funeral Home Chapel, located at 1508 Duke Street in Beaufort, South Carolina. The funeral service will be held on Saturday, February 11th at 10.30 a.m. at Fishers of Men, Pentecostal Church, located at 1311 Congress Street in Beaufort, South Carolina. Please keep Sister Devonna, her husband, Brother Jeremy Smith, and the entire Stewart family in your prayers. This concludes this evening's announcements. Thank you for your attention. Everybody say amen. amen. Thank you so much for everything tonight. And remember, uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday night is when we will put on our official attire and come back for the communion and feet washing. And so pray for us and those who are going to travel with us tomorrow night. Uh, just pray for us and God's going to use us in a mighty way. But my dear friend, he's always with me. I want Superintendent Parker to come and have the last words and send us home. God Amen. bless you, Bishop. Amen. God bless my Upper Room family tonight. It's good to be here. It's always good to be home, away from home. I want to tell you, I had one of the greatest times in Virginia um, with Dad. I had one of the most awesome times being able to sit at his feet. I'm working on a project right now, and a lot of times he find a lot of times I'm taking pictures of him. And I'm sitting there catching him in different moments as he's, he, as he's preparing himself to speak. And I told my wife, I'm going to work on this project, sitting at the feet of the leader. So on Thursday night, I'm here being able to receive from him what God has given to me. In the upper room, we are truly blessed tonight to have a man of God. Now, when I travel with them, oftentimes I stand back because... So many individuals want to get close to just be able to touch and hear the wisdom of God that this man impart. All over the country as we go and we travel, men and women of God want to hear what he has to say. So we are truly blessed. And I thank you for having the opportunity to be here in the upper room. We are truly blessed to have this man of God speaking to our hearts. I told him a few minutes, I'm going to sit down. I told him five years ago, we were at Jay Alexander um, restaurant. And I, I came into the restaurant. I said, Dad, I got it. And he said, what do you have, son? I said, I got Matthew 13 when he spoke about the 30, 60, 100 fold. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, now you have the ability to hear him 100%. And what I do after I leave the sanctuary, I go home and discuss with Goldie about the message without any notes. Because why? I got it in my heart. So I tell each and every one of you, when you get it in your heart, you can go tell someone else about it. May you all rest upon your feet. Amen. Repeat after me tonight. God first.